Hey everyone, Lonnie here. This is the start of the silly season. This is Black Friday. My life's out getting those great deals. If you want to lose complete faith in humanity, go out to one of these shopping centers on this day. I prefer to set the shop and create my own little presents for whoever. Today I'm going to be making a fishing rod holder. Now I don't know whether you can see it or not. This is actually not whole lumber. A friend of mine at the factory, they got in a pinch and they had to shave some one by sixes down to one by fours. And I had all these little end pieces he brought to me. Eight foot long, he hated to waste them. And I couldn't figure out what to do with them, so I laminated them together and then ripped them. This is what I'm going to build my project out of. Now when I start a project, I don't use SketchUp or a lot of black plans. I just use a rough sketch, rough measurements of what I want. Now, I already know I want this to be 36 tall by 32 wide. And it's a real simple design. Two sides. Top, bottom, now where the handles of the poles are going to be set, I'm going to have them drop through and rest on the bottom here. Where the rod, it should fit right to the top. Now I want to be able to uh, hang this on the wall or mount it on the ceiling either way. So I'm going to put these little corner pieces in there. And that's about all the design I start with. Now when you're using repurposed or recycled wood, you've got to keep an eye out for abnormalities. Right here, that will need to be trimmed off or hidden. Right here, I've got a big ugly patch. I can probably hide this. Knots are always a problem. They can look good, but if your saw runs across them or your router, right there, it can blow out a whole chunk. Another thing is you want to put your calipers on there. Right there, that's a lot thinner. You got to be aware of all this before you get started or it can really mess you up. Even if you think they all look the same, tiny differences, like just that little sixteenth of an inch, can just really jack your plans up. Alright, decided on the top and bottom pieces, these are going to be backup pieces. make the sides out of slightly thicker board. What I'm going to do, since I want a 36 long, I'm actually going to mark it at 37. Because I need to trim off the ends to make everything nice and square. I'm going to measure from that mark.
Now I'm glad I left them long. Right here, this is one of the ends, it has a small notch in it. I don't know if you can see it. I'll have to trim that off. And I noticed it didn't sit level, well, none of them, against my fence, which means I've got to plane off the edges. Now this is going to go up against the wall, so it doesn't have to be quite perfect. But you don't want it to have a 2 16 or a gap. It just won't look right. So I'm going to break out the planes. start squaring them up. Now if it's secured in my vise, remember I'm not joining two pieces of wood, I just want it to sit level against the wall. When I do my final trim, I need it to sit level against my fence. What I'll do is I'll take my straight edge, lay it on here, and I'll look underneath of this. You can see I've got a high point there. And a high point at the end. on all the pieces. Now, once you've got all your sides plain and square, go to your ends. Now that extra inch, you can fix bad ends, get them nice and squared up, or knock out rough places. What I'll do is just I'll basically put a square on each end. I'm looking for bad ends. That end, pretty rough. And I'll just put a little mark on there so I know I'm going to cut that end. Now, that end off definitely. And that end's pretty good. And you just repeat the process and chop the ends. Now if the end's squared up, we're ready to move on to the next step. But I want to cover in case I forgot. After planing, make certain all your boards are still the same thickness or width. Now, I already know that these boards are a little thicker by a 32nd to a 16th somewhere in there. So just to double check, let me give a good scribe. Just to double check. Yeah, that's considerable distance. So I'm going to box joint or finger joint the ends of these. So I'm going to set the scribe at the depth of the thickest one. Then I'm going to attempt to scribe it. And I'll repeat this process on all of these on both ends and constantly check my router table all through the process. Okay, now I'm setting up the router. this. Probably not. What I'm going to do is lower the bit and find the front of my table to just about the right direction. Same height. Maybe a little proud 
of the scribe mark. You don't want to come up short because then it won't look right. If you get too proud, you're going to spend a whole bunch of extra time sanding. And no one likes sanding. Now this next step, we're going to pick out which directions we want these boards, whether they're inside or out. If you've got ugly spots or splits, Try to keep them made it up and everything going the right direction. Going just below my scribe marks. Joint one. Both the sections. Joint two. And so forth and so on. Three. And three. You should always end up with the same numbers when you're out. Now with the bits set and secured, jig slides fairly free. Start with the first board, joint one, making sure the one is going that way. Clamp these in place real secure and get the arms of the clamps out of your way. Router has a lot of force and you don't want it to shift your work. It's nothing unusual. We'll get some splinter and some ugly parts. Save the pieces. We'll patch them up towards the end. Both my numbers facing the same direction. Now I'll slide this one up to the stop. Get everything squared up. I'll use one of these just to clamp the boards together and in place. And the two more to make sure the work doesn't move. You can try this by hand, but it's pretty risky. And you just start repeating the process. goes well, should have a nice box joint. Now like I said, these are cut a little proud. I'll have to cut those off on one side and I'll have to do some fill work. We can work with that. Now I just, just got to do this three more times. Now you see, these joints will stick out quite a bit. But it's a lot easier to trim them off and do a little sanding than it is to uh, fill that in if you come up short. I could have made this a lot easier using the same thickness of wood or just firing up the planer. Now these joints on this side don't stick up quite as far as this, but it'll be okay. Now once you've made sure your joints are meeting up well and everything is still in place and you haven't accidentally turned a board around or inverted it. It's time to 
router replaced oh, about two inches up for the uh, hole support. We'll just take off these ends. Now the marking number's turned out. Put these up against speed square to make sure it's low. I'm going to come up about two inches. That's where I'm going to cut my data. Okay, you can just barely see this in here, but I've got two shock weights at each end to give support to the end of my jigs. These weights are actually a little thinner than the wood, so it creates a nice clamping effect. And I clamp the other end to hold it secure. I've got my line marked right here. Cut out of the way. And I'll proceed to cut a dado. Spot something going wrong, take time to fix it before it becomes worse. I'm hoping this is salvageable. That was the closing. Should have clamped my boards together to start with. I think on this jig I'm going to cut these ends off so they'll fold flat when I got clamped. Okay, now that was close, but it's important just as soon as you realize something is going wrong to stop. I was able to salvage this. If it had went one way or the other, it makes a difference between whether a project is trashed or you've got to seriously rethink it. Now if I'd have messed this up, I could have simply cut it off, made it a little shorter, redid these joints. If the bit had gone down a little bit, I can actually hide that. But anyway, what's done is done. It's saved. Now let's put it back together and measure the distance between these two. Now when you've reassembled it, take the speed square. Try to get it squared up as much as possible. Everything is still dry fitted at this point. But that will give you a better distance. On this rabbit, bottom to bottom, I'm dead on 31 inches. So using one of my other pieces of stock, I'll cut it down to 31 inches, make sure it's square, and I'll have to plane it. Now that I've got it laid down, she slides in perfect. Now when this is actually all joined and clamped together, I will probably have to shave off, oh, 32nd to 16th, probably 16th. But I need to get this side here planed a little bit, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, no, I haven't skipped a step. I'm not gluing it yet. This is just kind of how my process works. I'm dry fitting everything together. And I'm clamp it. I'm trying to save myself some time. Saving time, what I mean is these little 
nubs that are sticking off the finger joints. I usually spend a lot of time getting them looking nice. But uh, I tend to mar up the wood. So I've got an idea. See if I can shave them off. That way I don't skin up the surface of the wood. I almost glued this up and forgot some critical things. I need some holes drilled in these two pieces that align before I can glue anything up. Alright, after I almost glued all this together, I had to hurry up and get it apart and clean the glue off. We need to be able to put fishing poles in here. And what I've done is centered two boards. Now I'm going to mark where to drill. but I'm just going to right at the two inch mark. Okay. Now I'm going to center the board, center my marks. I'm going to go about six inches each direction. Now pilot hole. Now I'm 
going to assume that four inches, it'll leave enough room for all the reels. Let's go to the drill press. Now the top piece, we're using a 7 8 Fastener bit to start our holes. shelf that slides in, we've got to be able to put the handles in on the pole. This is an inch, three-eighths Fastener bit. Now, a lot of your fishing poles have a perfectly round hilt to them, or handle, but you get the occasional uh, form-fitting ergonomic handle, it's just a little oblong. What I'm going to do is use my fence to kind of set my depth. I'm just simply move this down a bit. I do have marks on this table so I can kind of speed up the process. I'm just about halfway down. That's what I'm going to use. Make sure these are good and tight. I'll simply line it up. And go again. All right. Now the numbers are, of course, going to be the back. So I need some notches going to the front. Now on the base, we've got these little spaces right here. You just need to get them cut out so it's more oval shape. I didn't get my holes quite squared the way I'd like them. Alright. Plant them and get a jigsaw going. Now later on I'll come back with a router and dress these up. Okay, this is set overnight. My battery ran dead on me yesterday, so I don't know if you caught that last part. Broke off uh, one piece up here. Examining it when I initially laminated these boards together, somehow I just was a little shy, which made me a uh, shy blue, which made me a little nervous on how these others are going to hold. But 
really shouldn't get that rough putting fishing poles in a rack. So now I'll clamp it and get started with the next step. Now if the clamp's off, I'm going to check for square. Now this has been clamped up, it's set, I've got humidity issues, so the wood actually needs time to kind of relax just a little bit. Now I use several squares, speed squares are obviously my favorite. Okay. On each and every corner, I've got just a slight bow in the exact same place, which is good. It tells me it's fairly square. The best way is corner to corner. 47 and 3 quarters. Forty-seven and three quarters. So, even though my squares might not square perfectly, it's square going all the way around. Once this relaxes a little bit, we'll be good to go. Test fit this. And like I suspected, I'm going to have to shave just a little bit off the ends to make it fit. So I'll make this fit, and then we're going to start on some of the decorative routing. Now I'm going to cut on this side of the blade, mainly because it's just easier to film. Now I'll pull the blade out because I only want to do this a little at a time. What I'll do is I'll push the piece right up against the blade where there's just a little bit of force and push back, that'll shave off just a little bit. Now, while the saw was winding down, I went ahead and fit it. I knew it wouldn't fit yet. But remember, go back and forth, end to end. I got a nice snug fit. I use that method quite a bit. You just take off 30 seconds at a time usually. You don't want to push so hard into the blade you could damage the blade and possibly the bearing system on your saw. Just a little force. And I put an angle bit on the router table. And I'm not going to use the full height of it. You can see that's going to just a little bit. I actually want this to be pretty shallow cut, so I want that bearing to be flush. As soon as the square goes down, lock my blade into place. This is critical to remember to pay attention to which side you want to. Now that's a small angle on there, but it will really help with the appearance. I'm going to go ahead and take off this sharp edge using the same angle. I'm going to use a piece of scrap as a push block so I don't blow out the other end. I'll pull off a good looking build. A few simple angles will change the entire appearance from a square box to just something that's kind of interesting to look at. A 
a little more difficult this time. I'm not changing my angle. And this is a little thicker wood. take these box joints off and probably finish this with a hand router. I didn't think about them hooking on the end of my table. But anyway, you notice how it just kind of gives it a unique look. And this is just kind of a squared off plain Jane. Minor cosmetics. That, that was a little off center from the looks of it anyway. But minor cosmetics will have a big impact on your work. I'm going to take a moment to cut these nubs off and I'll proceed with the routing. Okay, now these are catching on my router table. Now I don't do any finished work till the end. There's going to have to be some filling done in there. All I'm going to do is put a little painter's tape and this will help reduce some of the scratches from the saw. Now, there are tricks for cleaning them up, but if you don't do them to begin with, you don't have to clean them up. Now, I've got this work clamped real secure. There's a couple more clamps in there. I've made certain my saw won't hit the tape. Usually, this is the area you're going to scratch up. That's why I didn't go ahead and tape up the whole thing. Try to hold back just a little bit. Regular palm sander will kind of clean that up. And I'm still getting into it. tape's taking most of the abuse. As soon as I start to see it, I know I need to kind of pull back a little bit. There is some damage on there. It's very minimal and easy to fix. What I'll do is take a card scraper. And what that'll allow is when I finish routing those is it pass over the table without hooking, but I have to go and do this on all four sides. Put some sanding will fix most of that damage and a little filler. Okay, I got the ends of the box joints trimmed off, fairly flush, smoothed down with the scraper. I went ahead and finished and I put a gentle edge on the outside front of my cabinet. No, no, my cabinet's fishing hole holder. Cabinet just sounds better. Now, what I've got to work on before I go much further is I got some small 
imperfections, where this is a repurposed or recycled wood, of course, even though I've measured and kept to the same width and plane, I've got a little variance in just two places. Now, I don't know how well you can see this, but this is up just a little bit, about a sixteenth of an inch. Now, what I'm going to use, this is like a thumb plane. Now, my rabbit's right up here, and if I use a full-size plane, I'm liable to hook it and rip it out, and this is the front of the cabinet. All I'm going to do is just create a gentle slope. Almost make it to this piece of wood. Now, since I use just a slight angle, this will follow that router trail and straighten it back up. And that'll be a small imperfection. Put a little wood putty in there and then sand her even and we'll cover that up. Now I've got one or two more of these to fix and then I'll move on to the next step. The only thing I have left to route for right now anyhow is the back sides of the rod rest. That's what I'm going to call it. I almost messed up but I've got a small enough router I can get into here. I really should have done this before I glued it. That's what happens when you get in a hurry. If you're lucky, you can compensate for some of these mistakes and fix them. Using the same bit, I use this piece right here to adjust the height on it. Now I pretty much repeat the process going all the way down, removing my clamps, and that's that. Now moving right along, in my original little sketch up here you see these four little corner pieces. A box joint or finger joint is strong enough on its own. All these are really for is cosmetics and to give the receiver of this, a way to secure it to a wall. Now using a pretty good section of the same wood, I'm going to cut these out. It's four inches wide, so on the inside curve I'm going to measure out four inches. and clamp it. Now I only need four triangles essentially. If I had enough extra wood even with this bad place in here, I wanted to cut an extra in case I mess up, which, as you can probably tell, happens quite a bit. I put the end of my T-square, or speed square, excuse me, fairly close. I'm going to clamp it in place. That keeps me from having to hold that.
start. I had a piece of break. This is all laminated together. But I've still got five. Now these have to be sanded before they're glued in. Now make sure your grains are aligned. I actually had to go back and bevel both sides of these because I had one turned the wrong way and that was simply to make a match. These are going to go in the bottom corner towards the back. What I'm going to try to do, because I will come back later on and pin these, is use a very sparing amount of glue and try to get it to squeeze out the back. An outside corner or edge is so much easier to clean than these inside edges. As you can see, this is pretty sparse on the coating and most of it is coated down towards the bottom side. Get it roughly fitted. Take your clamp. it's secure. I unfortunately see a little glue squirting up there. Damp cloth. Try your best to get that out of there. Now what I neglected to show is I took a card scraper and I prepped the whole inside of this corner before I actually get started. And then we'll repeat on the other side. Now this is a simple method of a wedge. I use some mounting tape to hold it on there. As you see, it stays away from your box joints, keeping you from damaging them until they're properly sanded. I've made a similar one for the other side. And I have it ready to go. Now, while the front is drying, I'm going to go ahead and glue in the holder down here. A little, I'll be more generous with the glue down here on both sides. I'm working from the front going to the back, that way it kind of pushes the glue on through. But there will still be cleanup. There always is. Now there's going to have to be some filling done in there. I really didn't think about that data when I put that angle on there. Let's go ahead and clamp this. Something that is handy with that mounting tape is I went ahead and mounted some MDF blocks. That way I'm not trying to hold my blocks and clamp at the same time.
once again, anywhere you see glue, just plain warm water. This is an old t-shirt. Try to get everything up. Now I've got some a little bit of filling to do in here. This is where the board slid on me earlier. It's not too bad though. Now I didn't take time to show me cutting the stick. Now I did bevel the edges on the back just simply because I had to bit in there. So it'll slide down a little easier into this bottom piece. Now the front of it's going to be enclosed. I'm going to leave the back open that way if something gets dropped down inside it'll be easier to retrieve it. Now there is some slight bowing. I'm a little tight at one end and in the middle. I'm going to have a gap up here. There's nothing I can do about it currently. I'm going to uh, just have to use some more filler. What I'm going to do is coat both sides of this with a little wood glue. This is a flux, flux brush for soldering or doing pipe work. Works great for spreading out glue. Once I've got a good cover there and it's spread out, I'll keep it from dripping pretty much. I'll just do the same to the opposite side. I have released this clamp down here. That will help relieve some of the pressure and tension on it. And the glue at first will usually work as a lubricant. So you got to be careful sliding this in that you don't actually drop it all the way through. things easier on me. I'm going to just clean up some of this glue. And we just continue to wait. On the bottom end, pretty much the same repeat procedure. Try to get your glue squeezed out to the back where it's easy to get to because corners are a pain. Now I move this one clamp just over, mark it that way it's lined up here, the secondary clamp. Is just for support. This offset angle is kind of a booger. Now we let it dry. Now there's nothing more boring than waiting for glue to dry. I'll probably take time to do a little shop clean. On the other end of this I was just going to mention I put some shop weights on because it's pretty heavy with that base and all those clamps down there. But I needed it off the table so I could secure it. So now I'll do some filling and some cleaning. I'll probably skip most of that because everybody knows what sanding amounts to. And then we'll go right on to the finish. Now I almost forgot. I'm planning on, was planning on putting some pins through here. Just wooden dowels to give it a little extra strength. The problem is, this is so thin on these. And all I've got on hand right now is 3 8 And I'm nowhere close to where I can just run out and get a smaller size. What I'll do is take one of the spares, gently with a pencil, 
like Mark. I'm going to use one inch brads, just a couple of them. And I'll repeat this process going all the way around. Don't care for that. I can cover that up. I probably should went the other direction. But anyway, the first thing I'll do before I ever start sanding is straightening out some of this wood. I just use a card scraper. It works great for getting back into the corners. Cut down on your final sanding time dramatically. If you get it smooth enough, where I'm going to uh, seal it with urethane, I'm not going to be able to carry it away. Now I've used the box scraper or scraper to get most of the rough stuff down to where it's nice and workable. I of course had to use a hand plane to get all three of these boards pretty square. I've got some gaps that need to be filled. And I've got a real bad gap right here. Now this may not show up too well on camera, but it's about the worst gap I have. I wanted to use some painter's tape. To protect the sides. Wood putty, much like glue, it's hard to get out of these inside corners. Once that's protected, I'll come up on the sides. This will give a nice straight line, even if it's a little overdone. Now I've concentrated right on that. Some of these, especially on the inside, your fingers are about the best way to put your putty in. As soon as this cures, or actually even before it cures, I can pull the tape off and that'll look nice and neat. Now I'll finish the rest of this. With everything drying on the other side as far as putty, what I've done is I've set up a stop here and I've set a stop here and this is a spacer to get me going. I'm going to put a keyhole here so this thing can be hung on the wall. Now that's a little long, but it's right where I want it, and I'll just simply repeat the same process on the opposite side. Okay, now I put on the wood putty, and I had to redo my little keyholes. If I had the right end, I'd have been going the right direction, but I wasn't paying close enough attention. But anyway, I'm going to start off with about 80 grit, knock everything down the rough edges fairly quick, into the finger joints. Then I'll take it down to about 100 and then probably 120. Beings, this is going to have a uh, urethane finish on it with several coats. There's no point in making it much smoother than that.
definitely be mounted close to the floor. Might put some stoppers in there just to make sure they stay secure. Well, now to prep it for staining and then seal it. Okay, and I've used a piece of tack cloth already to wipe the dust off here, and I've given a shot time for the dust to settle. When I uh, stain or urethane, I make sure if I turn on a light, I leave it on, like this, this, this one here, where I just got a switch. Now, what I'm going to use is a, a golden oak stain, which is a light stain. It doesn't show glue uh, runs or streaks if you miss them as bad as a darker stain does. And I've had a phenomenal amount of little screw ups on this project. Alright, sorry about that. I ran out of battery. This is almost the finished product. I'm going to, uh, bear with me here while I try to make this work. I'm going to uh, put about three to five coats of urethane on. It turned out a lot better than I figured it would. The good thing about the golden oak stain or any light stain. Hang on here, let me get this tripod opened up. A little motion sickness going on. Alright, that's it for my first Christmas special I guess. I'll have hopefully one or two more projects before Christmas gets here. It's a actually an easy project if you don't have multiple holiday dinners, Black Friday, and a few minor family problems or waiting for glue or wood filler to dry. Doesn't take much. This is re repurposed wood and I think it worked out nicely. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. It's going to be a long one even with some editing. Uh, my next full project video, I'm going to try to narrow it down and probably not go into as much detail, depending on how this video turns out. But thanks for taking the time to watch and please subscribe and all comments are welcome, suggestions and hints. Thank you.